uh, Alia, you can please take over and you can start with mm -hmm. Thank you all of you. So hello everyone and welcome to today's session hosted by JP Academia. Knowledge has a beginning but no end. Thank you all for finding time and visiting today's webinar and we need your support and motivation throughout the event. Myself, Alia Burhan, studying in grade 9 in the Garden City Alain in UAE. We have gathered here today to present on the topic physical and chemical changes on Earth and its impact on life on Earth. Before we start, let me share with you my experience in JP Academia. The thing I could see in everyone was the thirst for knowledge. As you know, we have a particular topic in this meeting. We have researched and covered each corner to our maximum during the rehearsal, and I assure you that this webinar will add feathers to your knowledge. During this course, we students help each other, as it is quoted, that a candle loses nothing by lighting another candle. And in fact, we students are the teachers for our colleagues. And at the end, we get supervision from the coordinators of JP Academia. That was my experience. This is an initiative of academicians for quality education. It provides a platform for digital learners, especially in this pandemic. Now let me heartily introduce the coordinators of this magnificent webinar, Mr. Jay Prasad sir, former principal and resource person CBSE, teacher trainer, career counselor, Kerala, India, Mrs. Rakhi Chitnis ma'am, academic coordinator, teacher trainer, Indoor, India, and Mrs. Parjatam Rajan ma'am, senior teacher, Gulf Model School, Dubai, UAE. Now I cordially welcome our beloved guest and assessor, Dr. Devika Prabhaharit. Raised and educated in England, UK from the age of two, after which she completed her undergraduate degree from King's College London in biomedical science, thereafter pursuing a degree in medicine, MD overseas, completing her training both in the USA and London. Now let's move on to the most awaited part of this meeting, which is the presentations by my friends and me. So stay focused. There will be a short, energetic and interactive quiz game in the end. And before we start, if you have any queries, as Ms. Rakri Ma'am already told, or wish to answer the questions by the presenters, you should use the chat system. And I would like to gently remind everyone that this is an online platform technical issues might be faced. Let me welcome Samil of grade seven from India to introduce you to geoliteracy and physical changes and its effects. Welcome Samil. Uh, thank you, Alia. Let's begin with our presentation. Uh, can you all see the presentation? Yes. Okay, welcome to the conceptual learning webinar, Geoliteracy part two, physical and chemical change on earth and impact on life on earth. I am Somil from class seven in Indore, India. Geoliteracy, what is geoliteracy? Geoliteracy means the earth and literacy to know about the earth or anything. Today's our topic is physics in geoliteracy. Now we will see a video. Can you see it? Yes. So what you understand from this video? Please write in chat. Okay. Okay. Physical and chemical change. Yes, correct. Yes, Rashid, correct. It is physical and chemical change. What is physical and chemical change? A change which do not make a new substance is known as physical change. It is reversible change. 
physical change do not change the kind of matter of an object means physical change do not change the property of an object you can see the video on my right hand side yes the boy is steering the uh, steps and it is changing into flower this shows the physical property of page this it, it do not it do not changes the chemical property how does physical change occur physical change occur due to the combination or a break up of the substance and form the new substance that's why the physical change occurs types of physical change in daily life the crushing can breaking of glass breaking pencil and tearing paper these are the physical change physical change related to the earth domains of earth system can you uh, somebody knows please write in chat okay is atmosphere they are atmosphere lithosphere hydrosphere and biosphere these are the physical domains of earth Physic physical changes with the domain of earth physical change with atmosphere sky plants mountains and clouds sky when you see in the morning it is a blue in color and it is in evening it is yellowish this happens because of the physical change when the plant grow it is a physical change but when plant it has a photosynthesis it is a chemical change mountain when the mountain break down and change into the sediment this is a physical change Physic physical change with hydrosphere lakes oceans and water cycle lakes when the glaciers or ice melt down it comes to the lakes and this is a physical change ocean when the Uh, when the water get evaporated this is a uh, physical uh, physical change water cycle when you know the three states of water cycle please write in chat uh, these are liquid solid and gas liquid when liquid changes to the gas means water vapor this process is known as evaporation and when gas changes into liquid means water this process is known as condensation when liquid and uh, liquid changes to solid this is freezing and when liquid changes to then solid changes to liquid this is melting when the solid changes to the gas this is known as sublimation and when gas changes to the deposit liquid solid this is known as deposition these are the physical change now let's see one experiment you need you need a jar you need a cup of hot water ice plate or ice cube cubes then put the hot water in the jar then put the ice plate or ice cube over the jar you can see the formation of cloud why okay okay this is because when the hot hot vapors and cold vapors mix up they form they form the process known as evaporation so that the formation of clouds occur you can see the cloud coming out from the jar thank you thank you samuel that was a marvelous presentation now that we have understood the physical changes and its effect it is equally important to find out the chemical changes and its effect on the environment too for this let me welcome nasna najeet of grade 8 from dubai to give you an idea on how chemical changes affect our environment welcome nasna thank you alia good afternoon to our not present here i would like to introduce myself my name is nasna najeet I study in Grade Eight in Gulf Model School, Dubai. We are doing conceptual learning webinar, geoliteracy, Part Two. 
Today's topic is physical and chemical changes on Earth and its impacts on life on Earth. I am going to be talking about how chemical changes affect the environment. So let's start. Can anyone tell me what this picture is about? Please use the chat box. Yes, it is about wood burning. Yeah, it is about wood burning with the help of oxygen and producing carbon dioxide and turns into a powdery substance called ash. Now, can we reverse this ash back into its original form, which is wood? No, I'm getting answers. No, we cannot change it back. So it is known as a chemical change. You must be wondering, what is a chemical change? A chemical change happens when one chemical substance is transformed into one or more different substances. So yes, a chemical change is a change that produces a new substance. Here we can see in these pictures, when we burn wood or light a fire, the wood's chemical properties, the look of the wood is completely changed. And in this picture, when iron comes in contact with the oxygen, it oxidizes a new substance. It is known as rust or iron oxide. Such type of change is irreversible or cannot be reversed. How chemical changes affect the environment? Chemical changes happen all around us. Wherever we look, we can find a chemical change inside a house, in our garden, in our city. It may be useful to us, worthless to us, or extremely dangerous. Due to activities of humans, some types of chemical changes and reactions affect living organisms very badly. One of those examples is acid rain. Now, can anyone tell me what acid rain, the term acid rain, uh, the term acid rain represents? Please do not annotate. Please do not annotate. The parents, please uh, take care. Students are annotation there. Please just stop your annotation there. And that's not you can do yourself, okay? Acid stop rain this. is rain that is so acidic, it causes harm to environment. Yes, I'm getting answers. So yes, rainfall made so acidic by atmospheric pollution that it causes environmental harm, chiefly to forests and lakes. The main cause is the industrial burning of coal and other fossil fuels the waste gases from which contain sulfur and nitrogen oxides which combine with atmospheric water to form acids. So yes, acid rain is a type of rainfall that is so acidic by air pollution, it causes harm to lives of biodiversity and the environment. The main cause is the acid rain is pollution of the atmosphere by burning fossil fuels such as coal, petroleum, etc. This causes sulfur and nitrogen oxides to mix with evaporated water in the atmosphere and cause acid rain. Now, I have a question for you. Why do you think acid rain is a chemical change? Yes, because it is caused due to burning fossil fuels, which is a chemical change. Now let's discuss some effects of acid rain. It causes respiratory issues in animals and humans. When as it causes respiratory issues in animals and humans, which means it causes respiratory issues like asthma or chronic bronchitis in humans. It also causes permanent lung damage in animals and humans. When acid rain falls down and flows into rivers and ponds, it affects the aquatic ecosystem. When the acid rain precipitates, it flows down water bodies, thus polluting them and affecting lives of aquatic creatures such as fish and amphibians. Acid rain also causes the corrosion of water pipes, which further results in leaching of heavy metals such as iron, lead, and copper into drinking water. Acid rain causes corrosion in water pipes. Thus, they affect our drinking water by draining or leaching copper and lead, which are very harmful to humans, into water, thus making them inconsumable. It damages the buildings and monuments made up of stones and metals. It damages buildings and monuments made up of substances such as stone and metals, causing them to break and become damaged. Now let's watch an experiment on acid rain. Hi all, now I'm going to be doing an experiment on acid rain. 
So these are the ingredients you will be needing for this experiment. Some vinegar or any other acid such as uh, citric acid. Two glasses. Some pH paper but we can also use litmus paper. A pH scale. And some water. So first I will be pouring water in both of these glasses. I will be pouring some vinegar in glass A. Now I am going to be dipping both of this pH paper into the solutions. As we can see here, the pH paper dipped in glass A has turned red, while the pH paper dipped in glass B has turned green. So, in this experiment, I have showed you the pH of two different mixtures. Now, let's hypothesize these glasses. A as rainwater from a city or a highly populated area, while B as rainwater from a green place such as a forest or a village. Now, due to pollution in the city, the rainwater of glass A has turned red, which means it is acidic, while the one in glass B has turned green. If we compare it to the pH scale, the rainwater from glass B shows a pH of 7, which is neutral and not a problem, while acid rain has a pH from 4 and above, which means it is acidic. Such type of rainfall can affect lives of many species due to its acid content. So we must make a decision quickly to raise awareness on the situation. I have a question for you. Can you tell me how does chemical change affect the environment? Yes, I'm getting answers. So yes, chemical changes like burning wood and fossil fuels can cause forests, fires, acid rain, etc. Here are a few external links we can use for further research on this topic. And that is it. Thank you so much for your patience. Thank you, Anasna. That was a stunning presentation. So now we know the chemical changes affecting our environment. But I'm sure you're excited to know how it impacts our daily life. For that, I invite Srimai Melat of Grade 8 from Sharjah to enlighten you on chemical changes and how it impacts our daily life. Welcome, Srimai. Thank you, Alia. Good afternoon to everyone. Firstly, I thank everyone for being here today. I had like to quickly introduce myself. I'm Srimay Melat, studying at Gulf Model School, Dubai in class eight. So as you all know, dual literacy is a literacy on geography. We, JP Academia, Academia in Conceptual Learning, has joined here with you in the geo literacy part two. We have discussed about physical change, chemical change, and their effects in our life. So thus, I'm going to tell you on chemical change on Earth and its impacts on our daily life. So I will be asking questions as a part of our discussion. Please do answer to that in the chat box. Firstly, tell me why do apples turn brown when you cut and keep them for a few minutes or hours? Yes, answers are coming. So it is because of the reaction with oxygen. So in the chat, I can see a term oxidation. What do you mean by oxidation? Yes, oxidation is the gain or the taking in or absorbing of oxygen. So due to this, the browning in apples are being caused. Is there any change in this or is there any change happening in this? Yes, there is a change. So do you think that there is a new substance being formed? Yes, there are a new substance form that is PPO, polyphenol oxidase. That is a brown or reddish or orangish substance that we can see on the apple after a few minutes. 
So this type of change where a new substance is formed is known as chemical change. A chemical change is a change when a new substance is produced. This may cause in like change in color of the object, temperature of the object, or even state of matter of the object. Yes, so some of the examples are rusting of iron, burning of paper, wood, etc. Some chemical reactions play an essential role in our daily life, while others have some negative impacts on both human beings and the environment. So first, let's start with the positive, and before that, we'll have a video that shows us how important chemical change is in our daily life. Chemistry happens in the world around you, not just in a lab. Matter interacts to form new things that is known as chemical change or chemical reaction. Every time when you cook or clean, there is chemistry in action. There are reactions when you take medicine, light a match or even draw a breath. These are examples of chemical change that we experience in our everyday life that are small small samplings of the hundreds of thousands of reaction you experience as you go about your day. So now let's explore about more daily life application of chemical change. 1. Burning Burning is a non-reversible chemical change. When you burn wood, the carbon in the wood reacts with oxygen in the air to create ash, smoke and energy in the form of light and heat. This is a permanent change that cannot be undone. You cannot turn ashes back into wood. Some of the examples of burning are burning of wood, burning of paper, etc. 2. Rusting Rusting is an example of chemical change. Iron combines with oxygen to form iron oxide that is reddish brown colored substance called rust. Rusting can be found in metals like iron. 3. Black tarnish The tarnish is actually the result of the chemical reaction between the silver substances in the air. When a thin coating of silver sulfide that is in black color forms on the surface of silver, it darkens the silver. That's what we call tarnish. We find tarnish on steel spoons, anklets, etc. 4. Chemical spoilage or decomposition. Chemical food spoilage is an unwanted quality change in a foodstuff. It can be caused, for example, by enzymic or microbial activity, oxidation or external tainting. 5. Fireworks. When you look at the fireworks, you see dazzling sparkles of red, white and blue trickle down in all direction. The explosion of fireworks is an example of chemical change. During a chemical change, substances are changed into different substances. Other words, the composition of the substance changes. 6. Ripening Ripening of fruits such as banana, apple, etc. is a chemical change. The sugar content of the fruit changes and the fruit becomes sweeter. 7. Cooking and fuel burning Cooking is a chemical change because they produce substances that are entirely new chemical compounds. The fuel burning for cooking is also to be considered as a chemical reaction. 8. Digestion Digestion occurs in the mouth, stomach and small intestine. Food is chemically changed in digestion when new smaller substances are formed. Chemical reactions are common in daily life, but you may not recognize them. It's very important for us to know about the chemical changes or the chemical reactions that happens in our life. Thank you. Yes. So even if we don't know it, chemical changes are a constant feature of our everyday life. For example, combustion happens whenever we burn fossil fuels. Rusting occurs when iron is left exposed to air and water, etc. So this video shows us how vital the chemical changes are in our life. So can someone suggest the examples that you have got from the video in the chat? Yes, rusting, black tarnish, burning, digestion. Yes, there are lots of examples coming. Chemistry happens in... Good. So, 
I I understood that everyone got those, and there are positive effects as well as negative effects. Firstly, let's discuss the positive effects. The main positive is that chemical changes are used to obtain electric and heat energy. It is also used to produce more useful substances out of less out of less used or broken substances. So this is the main usage. And the negative effect is that the pollution. You can see in our world, lots of pollutant gases are formed due to this chemical change. So we have to save our earth by reducing combustion, fuel burning, etc. So hope you all got all the points. So today we have discussed many things regarding chemical change and its impacts in our daily life. Thank you everyone for your patience and cooperation. And everyone, we will have a cues at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Srimei. That was fabulous. When you open your science textbook, you see a lot of equations. Here we have Rashid Burhan of Grade 7 from Alain to give you a clear idea on chemical changes and equations. Welcome, Rashid. Thank you, Alia. Hello everyone, my name is Rashid Burhan. I'm studying at grade 7 at Alain UA. And today we are going to talk about chemical change and chemical equations. As Sime has already told what a chemical change is, let's start off with what is a chemical reaction? Can anyone type in the chat box? Okay. Correct. The process that brings out the chemical change is called the chemical reaction. Now, what is a chemical equation? Yes, cut. A chemical equation is the symbolic representation of a chemical reaction or a chemical change. It shows how certain substances, like elements or compounds, react to form new compounds. For example, hydrogen and oxygen molecules react to form water. This chemical reaction is shown by the following equation. Two hydrogen molecules plus two oxygen molecules makes the equation of water. But as you can see at the right hand side, you will notice that one of the two is missing. This is because there are ways to write a chemical, the, we there are ways we, that we have to follow while writing a chemical equation. So I'll take you through the steps that we do to write a chemical formula. The first step is we have to write the symbols of the element. Or every element has an individual symbol. The second step is we have to write the valencies of the elements. If you don't know what a valency is, the valency of an element is its combining capacity and it plays a very important role in making chemical formulas. The third step is we have, we have to interchange the valencies and we have to write the valencies as subscript. Now the last fi and final step is if the valencies are divisible by a common number, we'll simplify in the numbers in the subscript or we'll retain them as such. For example, when you take the example of water, the first step is we have to write the symbol. So the symbols of hydrogen and oxygen are H and O. The second step is we have to write the valencies of hydrogen and oxygen. So the valencies of hydrogen and oxygen are 1 and 2. The th third step is we have to interchange the valencies and we have to write them as subscript. Yeah. So when we interchange the valencies, the answer will be H2 and O1. Now the final step is if the valencies are divisible by a common number, we'll simplify them. So as you can see, we can simplify the valencies in the subscript. So the final answer that we get is H2O. If we take another example of salt, in other words, sodium chloride, the first step is we have to write the symbols of sodium and chloride. So the symbols are Na and Cl. Now the second step is we have to write the valencies of sodium and chloride. So the valencies of sodium and chloride are 1 and 1. Now third step is we have to interchange the valencies. So after interchanging, we'll get Na1 and Cl1. Now the final, the, the final answer will be NaCl. How? That is because as the valencies are same, the valencies get cancelled out. That's how we get an ACL. Now other examples of formulas are potassium nitrate, 
potassium sulfate, magnesium sulfate, etc. Now let's look at some examples of chemical changes. When a piece of paper is burned, it turns into ash. Ash is an entirely new substance with different chemical properties than paper. Ash cannot be reversed to its original form, that is paper. Now why do paper turn into ash when burned? This is because of a process called combustion. For example, when the paper is burned, oxygen from the air combines with carbon and hydrogen in the paper, turning some of it into carbon dioxide and water vapor, which waft away with the carbon and it particulates in the smoke. This, not surprisingly, leaves the solid ash left over, which is lighter than the original paper. Now, the second example is when you break open an egg, it is a physical thing. But when we cook the egg, the cooking changes the chemical properties of the raw egg. Now let's talk about some characteristics of a chemical reaction. First one, change of color. In some reactions, a chemical change is indicated by a change in color. Second one, generation of light and sound. The, when we ignite the paper, is a chemical that is a chemical change that produces light and heat. Third one. Characteristic of a generation of a characteristic smell. Many chemical changes give off distinctive smells. For example, when food gets spoiled, it undergoes a chemical change, producing a distinct odor. A rotten egg smells different from a fresh egg. The last but not least is absorption or release of heat. Almost all chemical reactions are combined with either absorption or release of heat. When the egg is cooked, heat is absorbed which changes the raw egg into a cooked egg. Chemical reactions where heat is absorbed by the substances are known as endothermic reactions. When the paper is ignited, it releases energy in the form of heat and light. Such reactions in which the heat energy is released are called exothermic reactions. Thank you. You are not audible earlier. Hello? Yes. Okay. That was a tremendous presentation. Thank you, Rashid. Now we heard a lot about chemical changes. Let me welcome Agrit Santosh of Grade 8 from Sharjah to explain about physical changes inside the earth. Welcome, Agrit. Thank you, Alia. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, today, I will be um, um, telling you about um, g um, physical changes and physical and chemical changes and how it impacts our daily life. I mean, how it impacts the earth. Um, Physical changes that occur in nature. Can anybody tell any examples of physical changes that occur in nature? Okay, I see water, um, water cycle, landslides. One of the most common um, um, changes, um, physical changes is the water cycle. First, the water in the oceans evaporate, um, which is one of physical changes. Then the water vapor condenses to form clouds, which is also a physical change. And then the water comes back into the ocean during precipitation. Now, chemical changes that occur in nature. Can anybody tell any examples of chemical changes that occur in nature? I see oil spill, acid rain. Um, okay, so chemical changes that occur in nature are um, forests, forest fires and volcano eruptions, etc. Most of the natural disasters are also chemical changes. Uh, there are some which are physical changes also, like landslides, um, 
and rusting of iron is also a chemical change which happens in nature because when you leave iron outside it reacts with the air in the atmosphere now how changes affect our world both physical and chemical changes affect our world in many different ways such as it helps the earth reform and basically we makes our world what it is today now as you can see in the picture this is what our earth looked like 237 million years ago it was just one giant supercontinent called pangea and another change another way how changes affect our world is that um even fresh water comes down as rain and waters all our forests so that more trees can grow now why should earth reform earth reforming plays a huge role in evolution and one of the reasons dinosaurs went extinct is because of earth reforming now if earth in reform and separate into different parts um we um as earth separated into different parts animals got smarter and they evolved a uh, finding ways to find uh, resources and food in their area um, the reason why dinosaurs went extinct was that there wasn't such big of a landmass for them to explore and find food and shelter and because of that um that because of that um is one of the reasons dinosaurs went extinct it also changes climate and i will be telling more about this topic in the next slide so what if earth didn't reform the climate of countries will be very different from today as i told in the last slide um in the last slide i had a picture how india was over here near antarctica near the south pole so it uh, more three forming relocates every um tectonic plate or um, continents on the um, in the world so um india ends up in the middle of uh, australia antarctica and africa near the south pole and it was very cold there and it was almost inhabitable because of the location thus it changes climate and the water bodies in between land like the mediterranean sea will no longer exist as every um um chunk of land mass is um coming together and um, it closes off any lakes or seas which are in between land and the water bodies will just be one giant ocean uh, in the at the back of the earth where no land is there and when earth will form back into a supercontinent again the lake in where the lakes and seas was it might create mountain ranges when land um, um crushed together and when um, the chunk in between goes upward forming mountain ranges and this is a fun fact um, the alps mountain range was actually created due to this reason thank you thank you agraj what an incredible presentation aren't you excited to know how these two changes transfer energy so i am here to talk about energy transfer in physical and chemical changes yes i hope you can see my screen yes so i will mainly be speaking on energy transfer during physical and chemical changes as you already know what is a physical and chemical change here is a quick question for you during burning of a candle both physical and chemical changes takes place can you distinguish those you can use a chat system yes rashid has sent melting of wax is a physical change okay 
and Sri May, melting of wax is physical while production of gases are chemical. Yes, Sahil Muhammad. Yes, yes, you all are right. So physical changes, as you all told, on heating, the candle wax melts and form liquid wax. And the chemical change is when you light the candle, the wax present near the wick of the candle will melt. It will burn and become water vapor. This water vapor near the flame burns and gives new substances like carbon dioxide, carbon soot. This black color is carbon soot and water vapors, heat and light. So let's straightly move into the topic. Let us consider two common processes, a plant photosynthesizing and a candle burning. In these two processes, which, which change occurs? Are there both physical and chemical changes or just any of one, one of this? Yes, Sri Maya has sent both physical and chemical change. Yes, Sri Nanda, yes. Both, you are right, both physical and chemical changes occurs. But here in this example, I'm going to take only the chemical changes. So there will be obviously a change in the reactants into products. Both these processes also involve a change in energy. A change in energy accompanies every chemical reaction. Enthalpy change is the measure of energy change during a chemical reaction. So let us look at these proce processes and see if we can find out what is going on. First, the burning of candle. The wax is reacting with oxygen, forming a flame and producing carbon dioxide and even water. If you put your hand close to the flame, will you feel the heat or will your hand get burned? Yes. Yes, you're right. So you will obviously feel your hand uh, being burned or you will feel the heat. It is because the heat is being given out. And now on the other hand, the plant is just sitting there absorbing the UV rays from the sun. This time, the heat is coming from the sun and going into the leaf. So can you tell what is the different? What is different about these two processes in terms of energy or heat? It's okay, we can find it out at the end of this presentation. Energy is at the center of everything we do, but it is actually really difficult to precisely define it. I will simply define energy as the ability to do work or produce heat. An important type of energy is potential energy. Potential energy is energy due to the position or composition. Potential energy is present in the chemical bonds of molecules. Here is an example when you stretch an elastic band. Most important characteristics of energy is that it is conserved. The law of conservation of energy states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be converted from one form to another. So here is an example. This is the solar energy or the light energy. For the plants to utilize this energy, they will change this light energy into chemical energy for the process of photosynthesis. This law is also the first law of thermodynamics. Now, if we return to the candle and the plant, we can illustrate it like this. For the candle, the potential energy is contained in the candle wax and the oxygen is released. It is then transferred into the potential energy of the products. The extra energy left over is transferred out as heat. For the plant, the energy from both the sun's UV rays and carbon dioxide are transferred into the products, which are oxygen and glucose. This is the LHS, means the reactant side, and uh, this is the product side. So in the product side, you're getting oxygen and glucose. This time though, there is no excess energy. In fact, there is a lack of energy. So to make up this lack of energy, this plant absorbs more heat from the sun. Heat transferred into the plant. Both reactions, energy is transferred from one form to another. For a candle burning, the reactants and products are the system. When a reaction results in energy being given out, it is called exothermic reaction. You remember I asked a question, if you would put your hand near the flame, it, you will feel the heat. It is because the flame is giving out the heat. Reactions that absorb energy, heat energy from surroundings are called endothermic. Heat flows into the system, 
Our plant is a great example of an endothermic process. It is absorbing heat from the sun. Here are more examples of endothermic and exothermic. The first one is the melting of ice. If you keep ice for some time outside, it will start melting. It is because it is absorbing the heat from the surroundings. So there will be a decrease in the surrounding temperature. When we come to the other example, the flame, the heat is being given out. So there will be an increase in the surrounding temperature. That was my presentation. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed it. Are disasters like flood a physical or chemical change? Let us know this from Darshak of grade seven from Sharjah, who will be enlightening you with physical and chemical changes, flood and its effects. Welcome Darshak. Thank you, Alia. Good afternoon to one person here. I'm Darshak, uh, studying in grade, uh, grade seven in Gulf Mall School, Dubai. So this is geo-literacy part two. Uh, so my friends have already discussed you about uh, what is uh, chemical change and physical change. So I my viewpoint is different. Uh, so I made this story. So everyone likes stories. Even I too like stories. So let's get started. My dream invention. It was a Sunday morning in summer. I woke up so early. I felt so happy and decided to go to office a little early. At the office, I met my best friend. He has shared his idea about a mission for a permanent solution. For usual flood in Kerala. Why shouldn't I think about a permanent solution? I collected last four years newspapers, mainly June and July. All the newspapers said that the flood happens mainly during monsoon season. So I thought, what is monsoon? I checked the internet and found that it is a seasonal prevailing wind in the region of South and Southeast Asia blowing from Southwest between May and September. Then I said, why it floods in monsoon? But I did not get any information. I was depressed and left the plan. After a few days, I started from the beginning and briefly studied the papers. I had a friend in the media who worked as a news reader. And he also helped me. We watched the YouTube on how the monsoon starts. When we watched the video, we understood that everything starts from the sun. At night, we were having a conversation. I think the heat of sun is making some kind of physical change in the ocean. That's right, but how the heat energy make a change? I think the heat energy is loosening the hydrogen, hydrogen and oxygen molecules. That is the operation, am I right? Oh, I remember. Sar told this in class. Then we can take operation means the displacement of water molecule due to heat. Yeah, that is the loosening of molecules means the weight of molecules is less than the weight when they combine. Yes, so the molecules are going up. This process is known as evaporation. Okay, this is the way rain comes and in some area there are heavy rains. Whenever the molecules come together due to the rotation and revolution of earth, it changes into rain. Sometimes it is it rains heavily. Sometimes it is it is heavy and causes damage like land uh, landslide and wash houses etc. 
this physical change on the earth sometime it causes heavy rain loses in economy such as destroying agriculture housing of people uh, thank you sawmel welcome then i searched in the internet about flood prone areas and found that major flood incident was spotted on southeast part of kerala which is alappuzha then i also found out the, that most of the flood has occurred in alappuzha was kutanad and the picture of this incident was very upsetting then i check why uh, why flood comes in kutanad kutanad is located in the coastal lowland zone of kerala and is well known for its size uh, seismic bag backwater and low laying agriculture fields an area about 500 square kilometer of this region is laying below the sea level the area is intercepted by lagoons rivers and canals and is spread over part of alappuzha kottayam and pathanamthitta districts kutanad form a part of vembanad wellland system here i found here i would like to suggest a solution for flood in kutanad solution 1 construct a large drainage system that flow the excess water directly to the arabian sea solution 2 the houses around kutanad should be constructed on pillars solution 3 measure measures should be taken for temporary rehabilitation after some time i wake woke up and realized that it was on my dream then i was determined that i will make this dream come true and help all people who is suffering from flood thank you thank you darshak that was a fantastic story last but not the least let's look into another disaster forest fires for this let me invite abhishek of grade 7 from india to present about forest fires and its consequences welcome abhishek thank you alia Good evening to one and all present here. My name is Abhishek Kumar, studying at Delhi Public School, Meerut, at class seven from India. Today is my topic about forest fire and its effect, and I am also also going to include chemical change. So before knowing that, let's see a video about forest fire. On average, wildfire. burn up to 5 million acres of land in the United States each year. While they can start naturally, wildfires are often caused by humans with devastating consequences. Wildfires are large uncontrolled infernos that burn and quickly spread through wild landscapes. Types of wildfires may include forest, brush, and peatland fires. depending on the landscapes affected wildfires require three components known as the fire triangle a heat source fuel and oxygen a wildfire requires three components known as the fire triangle as they are the heat source fuel and the oxygen heat sources such as the sun a hot bolt of lightning or a smoldering match can supply enough heat to spark a fire that spark then turns into flames when fuel or any flammable material is present 
Dry, dead grasses, leaves, and trees are common fuels for wildfires, but so are living vegetation called green fuels. Pine trees and other evergreens contain flammable oils that can burn when exposed to a heat source. As the fuel burns, the resulting flames feed and thrive off of oxygen. When air movement, or wind, occurs, not only is more oxygen supplied to the fire, but it may also help transport and spread the flames. Since wildfires occur outdoors, they have a nearly endless supply of oxygen from our atmosphere to burn. Many wildfires are the result of natural causes. A warmer climate and weather patterns like El Nino can create the hot, dry conditions necessary for fires to erupt. However, about 90% of wildfires are caused by human activity, such as campfires that become uncontrollable, improperly handled cigarettes, or arson. It says that 90% of wildfire is caused by human activities, like burning of campfires and improperly handled cigarettes, or like burning of matchsticks through the forest. Although wildfires occur worldwide, they are most common in the western United States. There, High temperatures, drought, and frequent lightning and thunderstorms can create the perfect setting for wildfires. While they can be destructive, and sometimes even deadly for humans, wildfires do play an important role in nature. They can help a forest by removing harmful insects or diseased plants, and they can clear thick canopies to help sunshine reach seedlings on a forest floor. By being aware of the conditions necessary for wildfires to occur, they can be managed and prevented, thereby saving lives and making way for the positive effects of wildfires. Okay, so my question is from the above video, what can you understand? Please answer in chat. There are no responses till now, Abhishek. Uh, yes, from okay. Darshak, we can understand about fossil fuels. Three main forest fires are caused due to mainly humans. Rashid fire triangle is needed to make forest fires. Yes, we have a lot of answers, Sahil. Yeah. And it, yes, we have a lot of answers. Okay, so how does a forest fire occur? Can anyone tell some example? Lightning, Sri May has answered lightning. Rashid fire triangle due to lightning, lightning, pavan. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Okay, due to lightning strikes the tree, it can also cause fire. And like due to human careless, like throwing cigarette anywhere. So even a small spark of fire can spread and create a large amount of fire in that area. And also spread by hot and dry climate. So is forest fire is a chemical or physical change? A forest fire is a chemical change because when you look at a tree, you can see some wood part. So during forest fire, the wood will burn and form ashes. So it's a chemical change. So what are the effects of forest fire? Please answer the chat. Okay, so some of the examples are like loss of trees, which create a harmful gas called carbon dioxide, and which can create global warming. And due to forest fire, many animals can die. And some more animals does not have any home to live and it can also spread through our cities. So what are the negative effects of wildfire at the mountain areas? So you can see the picture that before fire, the rich soil, water repellent layer and wet soil are in a suitable place. But after the fire, the water repellent layer will increase. So the soil gets easily loose and it can create a landslide. So to understand it better, let's play a quiz. I have been sending a link through the chat. Thank you. Uh, yes, Abhishek, we will be having all your quizzes at the end. Yes. 
So thank you, Abhishek, for that wonderful presentation. That was end of all the presentations. Now I invite the guest, our SSI, Dr. Devika Ma'am, to let us know how our webinar went today. After that, we will be having an amazing quiz session. So everyone stay back and enjoy. Now I welcome Dr. Devika Ma'am. Hi guys, um, would you like me to give you some personal feedback on each of your presentations or would you just like me to talk about it generally? How would you, whatever you guys would prefer, the students? Uh, Devika ma'am, uh, if you would give a perfect feedback that would be okay instead of giving a journalized one. So yeah, I can. If you want me to do personal feedback, I've written down some points I would, I would like to yes, share with of the course. students because I think... Of of course, of course. So this is how our students will learn and the students, those who are there in audience as being an audience, they'll also will get some uh, points to learn. So yeah. I'll welcome your comments for each and every student. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Um, uh, so I think the first person was Salmil that did the uh, presentation on uh, geolitracy. Mm. Salmil, I can't see. Hold on one second. I want to see if I can see you. Where are you, Salmil? Yeah, found you. There you are. <laughs> I was just trying to find you on the thing. Hi, Samuel. Um, so I, your presentation was really, really good. Um, I liked your use of videos and the pictures that you had used. So you had really good uses of pictures and videos. So especially when you're doing a presentation, it's important to uh, have visuals for students to learn. So I think if you had just had writing everywhere, then it's more difficult for them to understand. But you, because you had the presence of photos and images, it ingrains that information better. Like if I'm, even for me, I might not remember the content, but I remember your images that you showed me. So you will remember it for a lot longer. So I think that was really, really good. Um, and I liked your application of daily uses. So you, you had different um, changes that you could find in everyday uses. So that was really good. And your explanation of your um, yeah, evaporation cycle, uh, that was very, very good as well. Um, so can I, can I ask you like what, what was one of the um, most important facts or one of the most, uh, the best things that you learned, do you think, from, from doing this presentation? What did you learn the most or what did you enjoy learning the most? Um, Ma'am, I enjoyed that. Uh, sir, help us to learn the physical and chemical change as uh, in school, we learn from the book that syllabus only, but sir, tell us the more about the physical or chemical change in around us. Yeah, and you, and you enjoyed that because you, you were able to connect it to your daily life, right? Yes. Perfect. It was really good. So that was very, very good. Um, I think the next person was Nesna. Yes, ma'am. Nesna, beautiful presentation. Um, your presentation stood out for me because of the colors that you had used. I know it's like, it sounds like a very simple thing, but later on when you do presentations in university and you know maybe even beyond that when you're working, presentation skills are very, very important. So having a good presentation, which catches your eye is extremely important and I yours caught my eye very quickly it's very easy to see I wasn't distracted by anything um, so the the type of presentation you used was perfect so you can keep using that one it was very, very good um, and um, I want to ask you a question what do you think you can do to uh, prevent acid rain formation can you t can you as in like what what do you think you can do to really uh, sort of a preventative methods anyone can answer if you want like what do you well, mean, what as a, as a population uh, ma'am, I think it's uh, better to reduce pollution or uh, use of uh, burning fossil fuels. Like uh, now, due to excessive of private vehicles, there are a lot of greenhouse gases forming in the atmosphere. So it causes problems like um, uh, holes in uh, ozone layer. So yeah. I think it's better to uh, adjust to a new way. Instead of burning fossil fuels, we can find a new uh, source of energy for such vehicles and uh, our transportation, etc. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. So renewable resources, right? So can does anyone know, know some renewable resources? Anybody else? Solar have any energy. Yeah, someone said so. I heard someone say solar energy. Yeah, oh, water energy. Yeah, so things like solar energy or you can do wind power, 
those are the things that came up to my mind. So yeah, perfect answer. That's that's basically what I wanted to get from you. So well done. Um, the next mm -hmm. person was I think Shreemay. Yes, I'm just Shreemay. trying to find higher. Uh, Shreemay, yours was really really good. I think yours was chemical changes in daily life, right? And you had yes. the you talked about oxidation and like the negative effects of um, what what it can do in in your in your daily life. Um, so, what did you enjoy most about doing this presentation? And if you would to maybe add more something else, would you change the presentation in any way? What did you like doing about it? Ma'am, I was really, uh, it was a really good experience. That means like I have just presented the six to seven slides, but more than that, we have researched a lot from different, different sites. And not only me, everyone will be researching and every day will be joining at a time. So discussing on that, that gives us a lot of new, new points. And each and every day, sir, ma'am, and every, everyone will be guiding us how to do or what are the changes that we have to make. So all this helped us improve a lot and was able to make it more better for the next day and yeah. if I get some changes for of course I will change it in my presentation no no I, I was just asking it was it was very good I was just asking if you wanted to add something else to it but it was it was perfect it was, it was very good uh, you had some very good points actually and I liked your use of examples as well you guys all of you all of you generally have very good examples you're using good examples and relating it to daily life which is important because that's how you remember it things that you do in your daily life rather than reading it from a textbook as such right so really good presentation i really enjoyed yours as well um i think the next person's russian russian yes, Rashid? yes uh let me see if i can find you hi Rashid. i can see you um yours was really really good i'm uh actually quite surprised at your knowledge of chemistry at this age um and how do you feel teaching somebody else things like chemistry or chemical reactions? How do you think it helps you? Do you feel like it helps you understand things better? Yes, ma'am. It's like a pleasure to teach others like what we learned and so that they will also will gain the knowledge that we have. And we will also will be we will also be able to gain knowledge from their from their knowledge too. Yeah. And do you find that teaching also helps you? Like, does yes. it help you? Yeah. So normally I like the fact that you guys are teaching each other because the only way you will remember and the only way you'll learn is when you teach somebody else. And yes. that's one of the only things. So when I was in medical school, we had to teach younger students and that's the only way you will remember things that you have. I will make sure that you understand it properly. When you can teach somebody else, that means you understand it completely. So I think you are really, really good. You, you made me understand my chemistry, which I've forgotten from a long time ago. So uh, it was excellent. So your presentation was very, very good. I really enjoyed it. Um, and the next person, I think it was Agraj. Yes, ma'am. Where is Agraj gone? Oh, hi, Agraj, I can see you. Um, yeah, yours was about chemical changes in nature. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that was the one you had the earth, you had the maps of the earth and Pangea, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really good. I, I learned some facts as well. So you taught me something new. Um, so what did you find most interesting when you were researching that stuff? Because it was, it was different to everybody else's. Yours, you went back in history. So what did you enjoy the most there? Actually, I'm just happy to include something. I already have something I'm interested about. Mm -hmm. I, um, you know, sometimes when you look on research just on the internet, you hear some mind-blowing facts and then you just become really interested and you want to learn more about it. There are just some things like that. And I feel interested about space and what, um, what I just talked about right now about the earth and all. So I'm just, you know, happy and uh, um, that I am able to link it between the presentation I did right now. And that yeah. is the reason I was really interested in it. Yeah, I could tell. I think it's very good that you're linking your interests with this topic. So you're able to link something that you like and you put it into your presentation. So I, I really enjoyed it. So how did you do your research on the earth and the lands and the pictures and stuff? How did you do the research? I, I, um, went, on, I went on YouTube and I just checked, um, I just, 
on the first day i just went and i just checked physical and chemical changes and i just checked youtube videos on that and just i just heard a random point on which this um earth's tectonic plates moving is physical change and then after i heard that i i felt like i want to link it within my project and then i just started googling about um how um was the supercontinent i already had information on this long back um i already used to do research on it but i googled again i just started um um getting points and i just um, brainstormed it on my notebook and then just wrote points on my own and just mixed it all up together and it was very good i really liked it i think it was such a different presentation and i i think you've succeeded in like captivating your students as well as and me as well so very good very well done thank you um alia i don't think i have to say anything about alia alia is amazing very well presented very well spoken and very well presented you've i think you've stolen the show you've basically been helping out with everything so yeah um perfect i really liked your the way you presented uh, on enthalpy um very good understanding as well you're you're in year 9 right year 9 yeah so um yeah great understanding very well presented i i don't have any uh, negatives to say for you so really good <laughs> i really enjoyed Thank it you. uh i think the next person was darshan Yes, ma'am. Darshik, I I wanted to clap at the end of yours because it was so good, really, really good. Yeah, I I think we should all give uh, Darshik a massive round of applause. I think it was so well done, so different. Um, I don't know how you came up with the concept of doing a story like that. Uh, and I I loved the little minions on the side. Um, you. you you found a way to uh, get your presentation and try to apply it and also you've applied it to yourself meaning you wanted to bring it out to change like you thought of something that happens in the in you thought of something that happens in daily life like something like floods that happen in kerala it means something to you obviously so you something that you that you want to do you like and you applied it and you brought it out to something so tell me how you thought about this like why is it so important how did you think about the floods on kerala why is it so important uh ma'am because like last 3 years in kerala uh, like in the soga seasons uh, flood comes uh, so i watch uh, news etc so i thought of from that then uh, jay prasad sir rakhi was all of them has helped me even our participants you yeah no very good i i i really liked it and um I, one question was um, what did you mean about temporary rehabilitation that's the one thing i didn't understand right at the end you said temporary rehabilitation uh, ma'am i didn't know like i just uh, wrote the story so like last part and all sar also helped me so sar okay. was uh, said that to me <laughs> about rehabilitation So okay. I don't, I did not check about it. Does it, does any of the other students maybe know? Any other anyone else? I know. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, temporary rehabilitation means uh, during flood, many people may lose their houses and their uh, place where uh, shelter. So mm. we can um, shift them to a place where they feel safe during the season, and later on uh, they can build or uh, the government and they can help them to build houses, and that's known as temporary rehabilitation. Oh, okay. So. so you mean for the community temporary rehabilitation for chimney okay okay understood perfect yeah but that's like really really good i i look forward to more such innovative uh, presentations from you dashek so i'm excited for your next presentation it's really good thank you and the last person but not by any lee means least uh, i think it was abhishek yes ma'am hi abhishek um yours was on forest fires right yes ma'am really good i really like the video videos uh, i always enjoy videos it explains things a lot um can you tell me a recent fire that happened is this just a i'm just asking yes. cuz but any 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 recent fires that you know of yes ma'am it happened in california yeah and and a big one that happened last year ma'am in in usa it happened in delhi but i think it is biggest in australia yeah exactly Yeah so Australia bushfire was the was a I'm sure all of you have been looking at the news and stuff it it was one of the biggest bushfires it lasted for a very long time 
Um, and do you know why with, with, your, with your presentation? I know you have the points. Can you tell me why in Australia they had have so many bushfires? Just some points. Why do you think that Australia is such a, you know, a country that has lots of bushfires? Ma'am, yeah. because of uh, like lightning strikes or due to humans also, like yeah. uh, like due to campfires or throwing cigarettes without improper, like that it can also cause. Yeah, exactly. And also like Australia is a very hot country, right? Yes, sir. yes, ma'am. So the three things you've said it. I mean, you already said it in your presentation. So heat, drought, drought. So not having enough rainfall. That's another reason that they can have, you know, heat yes. uh, and also strong winds. So when you have extremely strong winds, it carries the fire across, right? Yes. So uh, a fact for you, like in Australia, I think the winds were nearly 60 miles per hour. 60 miles per hour is extremely fast for, for winds. So that's why they had such big, um, you know, winds there. Um, can you tell me some positive effects of bushfires? Does anybody like, know any positive effects? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Like some of the poison uh, plants will be rubbed, and also some of the insect harmful insects will be. Will be sorry, the insects will be. Will be rubbed. Oh, like you mean uh, removed? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm looking. I'm looking for something else. Anyone else know positive effects of bushfires? Ma'am, if there is any diseases in the trees or uh, any any problems caused um, some diseases, such type of fires it can um, wipe out the disease. That's yeah. That's also that can also be there. But I was actually looking for so when you have uh, heat and bushfires, it, it heats the soil. So when you heat the uh -huh. soil, yeah. Does anyone know about that heating soil and it yes. causes the spreading of the seed. Yes, it affects that, the germination. It. That is like the overcrowding and all these will be less and the plants will be able to grow much more better. Exactly, so yes. Yeah. That's the answer I was looking for. So germination, seed spreading and uh, heating of the soil. So it, it helps to spread, basically grow more plants. Yeah. So who said that? Shreemay said that, right? Who was it? Shreemay? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Well done, Shreemay. Yeah, that's the answer I was looking for, germination. Um, but yeah, otherwise... Um, Abhishek, your presentation was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. So, well done, guys. Everyone did very well. <laughs> thank you, Ma. Uh, thank you, Devika. Uh, I really appreciate your keen observation about each and every uh, student, those who have presented. And I really tell, uh, tell you one thing. Uh, they really research a lot and they really work out for a lot. And uh, every day they come with so much of enthusiasm in the academy uh, for their presentations and they are ready to accept the changes they are ready to accept the feedbacks and i think this is what the beginning of learning for each and every child we yeah. must open our minds to keep or to accept the feedback so that we can grow more and more every day fine so thank you once again devika for your wonderful observation and uh, giving your precious time to us thank you so much really yeah. good uh, yeah, precious time to the area because i think I never expect this kind of uh, feedback because it is uh, <laughs> very good for really yes. motivating better than we the teachers are here. Because yes. I think it is in my mind, we are also conducting some social auditing. We are starting from here. Okay, thank you very much. No problem, you're welcome. Okay, I'll uh, hand over to Alia once again so that she can continue with the, some of the exciting quiz. For the students in the audience, everyone are most welcome for the quiz. You can please tune up uh, your uh, devices and set and get ready for the quiz. Alia, please take over the chat. Thank you. Once again, thank you, Dr. Devika, ma'am, for giving your time and assessing each of us perfectly. Now it is time for the quiz session. The questions are combined by Srimay from all the nine topics presented today. As Rocky Ma'am told, the quiz is open for all the participants over here. Srimay so will be sharing you the link and code in the chat box. Chat box. All of you can join. So Srimay, you can take over with the quiz. Yes. Chemical and physical changes occur around us all the time. These changes are essential parts of our everyday life. For example, digestion, combustion, osmosis, etc. However, a few of the chemical changes that affects us are harmful. 
Now it's time to test our knowledge. So I will be giving you a link. Click on that and type your name and join. So I have shared the link in chat. So once almost everyone is ready to start, we'll start the game. You can take your time. We are waiting. So the code is 903615. The first person is Sahil Muhammad, Ashwini, Paul, Sridevi, Pavan, yes, Irfana, Darshak, Shekhar, Akshata, Pagnes, Ritika, good. So we'll start once it's like around 15. Narayani, Kulkarni, Ankit, Saumil, Srinanta, Abhinav, Gauri. Yes, good. So once everyone, Agrej. Yes, so now we'll start. This depends upon the speed, how you give out the answer. Everything will be on multiple um, choice. You can choose you can the answer. One minute also. I think everyone will be joining. It's open after, even after, if we start, they will be able to join. Okay. So there will be true or false as well as multiple choice. Click accordingly. And if you think there are one or more answer, you can click the both. Chinmay, Rashid, yes, many are joined. Let's start now. Nesla has joined. Okay, good. So I think we'll be starting now. Okay, start. Five, four, three, two, one, go. So you can click on the tab that you have opened the game. Thank you. 